So today we're going to be going over model in place uh, families or components. Um, so I'm going to use a model that I created for a different set of tutorials that I have um, for creating a, a tiny house. Um, those were this was modeled in Revit 2018. Um, at the end of these videos, I'll probably do a a walkthrough of an interior space and then a walkthrough of an exterior space and kind of going from start to finish and, and working through all the tools and, and that sort of stuff. But um, for a good example of this, uh, of these model in place kind of components, basically what I'm talking about is this component drop down menu. There's a model in place option here. If you have a an extremely custom uh, family or something that is only going to be used in a single project and not something that you would want to throw into your library and reuse over and over again. The model in place tool is really handy for that. Um, I use the model in place tool for pretty much all of my woodwork, all of my cabinetry because uh, we typically, we're not using the same cabinet on any variety of um, variety of projects where we're kind of creating something completely custom for each space so I tend to model it in place um, for that sort of situation so what I've got here is I have my I have my kitchen as a model in place so it's a casework um, just like if I come here and model in place I made a casework for the kitchen cabinetry um, a casework for this desk over here and then a casework for the uh, the kind of Murphy bed that's over this direction. Um, you can create doors, you can create windows, uh, walls, all sorts of different stuff here using uh, the model in place tools. The model in place tools, once you select something, so let's say I select casework and I hit OK and I name it whatever I want to name it, it opens up that create tab that's the exact same as the family editor. So you end up using the exact same tools as you would if you were creating a typical family that then you would load into a project. If you're creating it directly in the project, you, you're using the exact same tools. So I'm going to cancel that model there. But if I go to this section here so I can see what I've got, um, I've created a bunch of, this This is basically a bunch of extrusions. So all of my door frames are an extrusion, uh, the style and rail, um, all of that sort of stuff. And then I've got kind of the, the dishwasher is a, a separate family that I use um, fairly consistently. So that's a, that's a separate model in and of itself. But I've basically created a model in place option here so that I can span from this point to that point rather than loading in individual cabinets all the way through. Um, I've just modeled them in place here. Some people have asked me before, well, doesn't it make sense if you're going to constantly create new cabinetry, doesn't it make sense to have um, a family model for, you know, this cabinet that's parametric and you can adjust it up and down? Um, it's in, in some situations, yes, maybe. Uh, but in my experience, I can actually model this faster than I would be able to sort through the endless amounts of variation that I would need in a in a cabinetry model, or the amount of cabinetry, um, the amount of kind of cabinetry variations that I would need. Because I would need something like, okay, I've got to have one family that's a door and a a door down below, a drawer above, I need a full door height, I need three drawers, I need three drawers that are kind of equal in in size, one smaller, two the same, um, you know, two doors in a drawer versus one drawer in one door, uh, a single big rollout. Um, the amount of kind of options kind of get pretty expansive. Um, and just scrolling through a folder trying to find the one that you want, I can make something like this quicker than I would be able to scroll through and find what I want. I would also need every iteration of those for different cabinet styles. So this is just a flat panel with a recess, uh, an inset door. If I wanted an overlay door, that would be separate. If I wanted a cope and stick kind of detail around the inside or a molded panel or a raised panel, all of those are separate families that I would have to load in and sort through. Um, and it's just one of those things where sorting through that many files just gets to be cumbersome and kind of out of control. Um, but you can also throw parameters 
on these the exact same as you would a typical family if you would like to throw dimensional parameters on it you can um, what I've actually done is if I go in here to a 3d view you can see I've got a um, I've got my my cabinetry here I also have this little t this desk kind of table here and you'll see this this gray element that's pulled down here I've created a view parameter on that and if I select this piece you'll see under visibility I have table up table down and I can check the box on and off and it'll automatically display the table up with a couple chairs on it versus okay I actually don't want to see that I want to actually fold that up in this view so I can adjust that back and forth um, I also have other views let's see which one it might be I believe it's this one okay so I've also done the same thing with the Murphy bed so I have this this folded up version of the Murphy bed and I've got the hidden bed and then I have a bed down option where that folds down into place and then shows how that bed would sit in the space so if I want to do different views showing it closed and then showing it open I've got that ability to do that just by clicking a checkbox on and off um, so having the ability to add parameters to these things is also kind of nice um, I don't tend to add a material parameter to it because I'm usually applying the materials to it uh, as I go and then if the material is going to change I'll change it in the actual material editor as opposed to having an actual material uh, parameter on it so if I go back to this this view um, adding these custom components and having uh, having kind of cabinetry and casework and stuff that's all custom um, makes renderings and things like that stand out a little bit more than if you were using the stock stuff that comes out of Revit the stock cabinetry that comes out of Revit is kind of garbage um, and there's not a you can usually pick out a Revit rendering just from the stock cabinetry if they've used that so uh, just as an example something uh, something like this obviously um, I'd have to repath all the textures and stuff like that. You're seeing a bunch of uh, things that uh, haven't been pathed correctly. When I upload this to Revit 19, it kind of threw a couple things for, for a loop. Um, but this entire image, because of the custom elements, it all ends up rendering something like this. So I've got kind of stone in there. I've got a barn beam across, but the cabinetry makes makes a big difference in how renderings turn out because if you can add all those little details and and get that look that you're after that starts to make a difference in kind of how the final product ends up coming out so being able to create custom pieces like that does make a difference in the end and it also gives you more versatility and uniqueness to the projects that you create so um, the model in place tools can be really really powerful and I use them an absolute ton so I would recommend getting used to the model in place tools because they they can help you out a lot in making unique and creative elements uh, throughout your projects so uh, that's an introduction to uh, the model in place tools